it, guys. Welcome to the 2013 Uvesa Recovery Day. And it's all about you, so I want to hear your voice. I want to be able to hear you because today it's all about recovery. It's all about one more day, and it's all about you being here today. So give yourselves a grand applause for being here. Prepare yourself because you're here. The first thing I would like to acknowledge is the committee that put this together, invited all the agencies that are out there. Um, they did all this hard working with a lot of you volunteers that are here. So we want to acknowledge all the volunteers that are here, that put this together, that jumped in this morning because we had to move the event from the outside to the inside. So thank you all for just jumping in, picking up the water from everywhere, moving tables. Thank you so much. Um, and also, I would like to have the committee stand up because they did such a great job. Carl Alps. Thank you so much. So it is my honor to call up to the podium our honorable city of New Bedford Mayor Jonathan Mitchell. mid-September and I thought, you know, I'm just not one of these people who says, you know, I just love the fall in New England. You see the, the uh, leaves on the trees turn up. I'd rather take two more months of summer. Right? This is, uh, this is uh, Get the barbecue going. You know, this, is, this is much better. Uh, but I, I'm here today basically to salute all of you and to salute all the providers. Uh, I, I, I want to say this. It's, it, things work better here in New Bedford because people work together. And uh, we we're just talking about it a moment ago that there are many communities in which, uh, you know, one organiza organization A, organization B, organization C all trying to do their own things, but they operate in silos and, uh, and they don't make the most of their resources and all their, their talent. Uh, here, in New, here in New Bedford, uh, we have, uh, we have a, uh, a group of, uh, of very talented organizations that talk to one another and try to make it work well for folks uh, in need, but regardless of what those needs are. 
So I, I do want to salute um, today. I don't want to salute PACA. Uh, Carl does a fantastic job here. It has been for a long time. And for a long time, Carl, they don't buy the uh, High Point, Drug Free, New Bedford, Seven Hills, uh, MOAR, uh, and Veterans Transition House. These are six organizations that get together and they talk and they make it happen. Uh, I want to thank John Lobo from City Hall. John works for me and, and making, uh, making sure there's grease in the wheels. Um, it's a partnership. It's, it's you have nonprofit organizations and you have the city government. They've got to work together. And, and, and even more so these days, the money's drying up. So I don't have to tell anybody about that. The biggest reason I'm here today uh, is because of all of you. For those. Uh, for those who uh, decided on their own that they're going to take control of their lives despite obstacles, despite difficulties that they never thought they'd encounter in their lives, you deserve you deserve to take a bow. You deserve uh, you deserve credit for uh, for doing something that a lot of folks don't do, uh, regardless of whether they have an addiction. And that's to say, I'm going to take control of my own destiny. I'm going to step up uh, and, and make make something of my life. And so. Uh, I want you to know that you have my respect for making that decision. I've seen, I've seen friends and family struggle with that decision, had uh, uh, substance abuse problems and addictions, and I know it's hard, uh, but I want you to know that you have my respect for making that decision, and you have my support as a mayor uh, in your journey ahead. And uh, I really want to make sure that, that you take the time, and I suggest that you take the time to continue to spread the word about you know, how it's done, the decisions that you need to make, that you made as individuals, and how others can do it too, so that we can have, that we can have more, a more productive city, a more vibrant city, and a stronger community. That's what it's all about, and, uh, and uh, thanks for being a big part of it. I really appreciate it. Thank you, and good luck, and let us know what we can do to help. I have a proclamation that I will give to Connie. I won't read the whole thing, but uh, I give this on behalf of the city of New Bedford for all of your efforts. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. And this proclamation is for you guys, because you made this happen. We couldn't do it without you. Um, our next speaker, and it's such an honor to have her here. Mary Ann, Executive Director for MORE. Hi everybody, can you hear me? Yeah. That's good, because you're making it good in the hood. So welcome, welcoming, and what I need two speakers. This is pretty cool. <laughs> wow! <laughs> more, right? That's you got it. You got it, Brenda. <laughs> and um, and then High Point has been a partner for a very, very long time. In fact, John that does the groups for High Point, I mean for more, um, actually works. And Seven Hills, one of our greatest supporters of Recovery Month, absolutely. And the Veterans Program, we need to support our veterans, right? Amen. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And Drug Free New Bedford, fabulous. What a real partnership, like Connie said, and like the mayor said. I feel so esteemed that I came after the mayor. Wow. <laughs> so, brothers and sisters, <laughs> as we're here today to celebrate recovery, um, I know there's a good deal of you that is coming to the Recovery Month Celebration Day in Boston, and we will be marching down the streets and enjoying the voices for what? Recovery, right? Absolutely. And we're going to have two major themes, of which New Bedford has been a major partner in. Um, 
We all supported a new law that's out there that's called the Good Samaritan Law, which is all about protecting witnesses who call what? 911, right. So we're all, when we leave, we're gonna become card carrying Good Samaritan members, right? right. You gotta teach the rest of the world about this, right? Because right. we wanna save people, right? right? You see this up here about healthcare? Do you know what's happening in October? Well, I'm gonna tell you, there's a thing called One Care. One Care, which means that those of you or your families or friends who may be on Medicare and Medicaid will come together to get their services channeled through One Care. Is that good? Yeah. Well, we'll talk more about it and we're gonna move the program along. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mary Ann. Just to let you know that a couple years ago when uh, Mary Ann invited me to the State House, I took a van full of people, not knowing where to park. I went and parked in the garage, and I forgot it was too tall, and I set the alarm in Boston. So if you're planning to go, make sure you park on the street. Thank you, Mary Ann. It was great. Our next speaker, who I have known for a long time, very long time, Carl Al, CEO of PACA. All right, thank you, Connie. I'm sorry. It's all right. That's fine. You're a Not a problem. Yeah. All right. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. It's still morning, and I was told that it had to be brief. So I'm going to keep it simple, right? Uh, because as Connie said, this is about you. It's about you, 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 and all of us here. Uh, because Recovery Month is one of my favorite times of the year because this is what it's about. All the time we talk about you know, the statistics of people dying and the misery and all that kind of stuff. We don't spend enough time talking about recovery. And that is what this is about. Talking about recovery because recovery does work. And it works better when we work together. And this is an example of how we're doing it in a community. So I just wanted to say what recovery means to me. Uh, because it has a wide variety of different meanings to a lot of different people. Uh, it could be folks that I know that come through the halls and put the years of recovery together. It could be my mom who was recovering from the loss of her husband of 25 years, who got into this business and dedicated her life to, to High Point and, and serving people. Uh, and now she's in her 80s working at, uh, at the jails today. It, there's a whole ton of stories out there that people are giving back. I see recovery, it begins with an R, right? Responsibility to yourself, to recovery, and to your loved ones, and to your community. We need people to take responsibility and help us together move recovery forward. E, educating yourself about yourself. That's one of the key things that I've found in terms of recovery is understanding yourself. Be true to the, thy own self, be true about yourself, about recovery, about different ways of living. There's a better way of living, and those that find recovery find out for themselves. Commitment, it takes a large commitment to stay clean, and I applaud everybody that's doing that. And those that are struggling, it's okay. We want you to keep coming, we want you to be with us, and we want you to be part of us together, because there is hope. Recovery does work, treatment does work. Open-mindedness. We got to keep an open mind on the things that are in front of us. Old, old ways of doing things perhaps haven't worked out so well for many people. We need to find new and better ways to do things, and we need to do it together. Va uh, value, value is, is 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 important. Valuing yourself. Everybody in this room has a gift. Unfortunately, all too many people don't open that gift. I'm asking folks to dig deep, find out what you're good at, find out what you're passionate about, and get involved. Do something. Value yourself, value your community. Enlightenment, that comes with after uh, finding your value. If you find your value, you'll be enlightened with all the goodness that you have inside, and you can let that light shine. That's what this is about. That's what recovery is about. And then, of course, the last R is about rolling with the punches, because life happens on life's terms, right? Uh, and not everything always goes as planned. Uh, but together, 
there's nothing that we can't do. But the most important part is the why, and that's you. You. As, to, as Connie said at the beginning here, this is about you, and we need to come together, but we need you to be part of that solution. This, today is about living in the solution. I'm glad all of you are here today. I'm glad all of you that are watching at home can be part of that solution. No matter where you're at, whatever walk of life you are, this is a societal issue, and recovery does work. There are 23 million people in the, our community, in our nation, that are in recovery. That represents 10% of the entire population of the United States. We're everywhere, finding recovery in our own way, doing what we can. I encourage you all to continue that fight, work with these different groups, and be together. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. It is about you, and it's about um, the community that we have here today. So what I, I challenge you to utilize all those services and agencies that you have out there to build your recovery so that you can really, really ask for help and you know where to go. This event could never have happened without the support of these agencies, your support, the support from the city, and some also very important, the support from the state. So I want to acknowledge Brian Sylvester from the Massachusetts Department of Public Health Substance Abuse Bureau. We want to thank him for, uh, for being here and also always supporting the Southeast. I know Brian has been in this area for a long, long time. I remember when I was an outreach worker, I used to see his name and actually being trained by him. So that was 20 years ago, almost 20 years. So we want to thank him. Um, we want to just acknowledge that he's always here for this community. Thank you so much, Brian. So it is my pleasure now to introduce uh, my Vice President of Seven Hills Behavioral Health, Lee Delphonse. Thank you, Connie, and recovery works. You've heard that message repeatedly today, and I, I want to reinforce that very important concept. You know, the faces and voices of recovery nationwide and more locally really have been talking about the fact that for too long, you know, people in recovery have been in the shadows. We've, we've fed into the stigma by not talking about recovery. And instead, what we talked about was all the problems that come with addiction. Well, let's, this is a celebration. This is a celebration about the fact that recovery works. It works, it's a miracle. And everybody in this room here is a miracle. And, and what it's really exciting about the event today, I come from the Rhode Island system. I've been there for about 30 years, recently came to New Bedford. And as soon as I got to New Bedford, I started meet, meeting people like Carl and Dan from High Point and, and Brian from the state. And I've been very impressed locally with the level of collaboration that takes place. Because the truth of the matter is, we do a better job for everybody when we work together. I know at Seven Hills Behavioral Health, we're very committed to embracing recovery and wellness. The idea that our job is to really be a partner with the clients that we serve. And one of the things that means for me is we have to remove barriers to access. Agencies have to find a way to get to yes. When somebody reaches out for help, we need to be there as in a responsive way. And Seven Hills is committed to that goal. Again, this is a celebration of you. I, I look forward to a partnership and thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much, Lee. Um, we have another speaker coming up, but I just want to remind everybody that we have a full day of events. One, we will be having raffles, so make sure you get your tickets for the raffle. Two, we'll be having lunch. I know I want to eat some nice hot dogs that were ready for us. And three, I don't know if you saw the RV outside. Today's about recovery and really taking care of yourself. So take advantage, we're offering HIV rapid testing, and we're also offering overdose prevention and Narcan reverse. You don't have to do none of that. But connect with the individuals in the RV and see, you know, the information there is available for opiates, overdose, and HIV counseling and testing. This is about you. This is your day. This is your spot where you're going to take care of yourself and take, 
you know, your recovery one step further. So take advantage of the services. So it's my pleasure to call up somebody that I actually did a training in New Orleans with and uh, <coughs> got to know her and how important a job is a high point. Um, so it's my pleasure to call Maggie up here to speak in behalf of High Point. Put your hands together. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. I see so many faces that I recognize from my years of working in New Bedford. And um, I just need to tell you that I have the best job. I am the community support program director for High Point Treatment Center. The mayor of my program is John Ford. Some of you know him, yes? Julie. Um, you know, our... Where's that thing? Uh, Hold on, I'll put it on the chase. Thanks, Terrence. You're welcome. Love that. I know Terrence from seven years ago, and uh, he's the best cook in High Point. <laughs> Today, I just want to take a moment to mention it. It's about prevention works, treatment is effective, and people recovery, recover. And um, I feel I am not from New Bedford, but I have worked in this um, town for city for seven plus years, and you are, have such rich resources here, and I'm so grateful to see everybody here because recovery is about unity. Um, one of the, uh, Connie talked about us all coming together to put this, this event together. Well, you can't recover alone. You need one another. And whether you're in a, a formal program or you come to PACA to um, take advantage of all the services and the meetings that are held here, reach out your hand and help one another. It's so important for your recovery. Um, I don't want to take a lot of time because the food's ready. So, go eat! Um, I, act I actually would like to give the opportunity of somebody to speak. Uh, uh, before we go, um, I think the most powerful statements don't come from individuals other than you and you telling your story. Uh, this room right here has a lot of positive energy and a lot, a lot of recovery and a lot of support. Uh, this is where the this is the room where many of you disclose that you're in recovery. You break down, you cry, and you hold hands, and you know you become one family. And this is the room that you will see the true colors of somebody when they really need that help. Um, it's your personal story that gives hope to many. It's your personal story that somebody will take 10 years from now and remember. So I wouldn't want you to go out for lunch without hearing somebody special to talk about his personal story. So put your hands together and let's have Tom talk about his personal story. I'm a great recovering addict. My name's Tom. First and foremost, I always like to start out by saying I like to thank God for absolutely everything that's happened to me. The good, the bad, and the indifferent. Because if it wasn't for all the bad choices and decisions I made, I wouldn't be here in this place today. I also wouldn't have found out what really made Tom tick. What, uh, what would make me feel good and be able to be a successful member of society. First of all, I want to thank all the agencies that are here and for this day. Because if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be standing here. Um, my last time out of the gate, it was 2004 when I came to one of the facilities here and uh, really was struggling, relapsed three times out of that facility and they were really kind enough to continue to take me back um, until the third time when, uh, you know, at some point you just got to be told that enough is enough and you need to go on and further your journey somewhere else. And um, 
I did that. And through God's grace and absolutely through all his mercy, I found myself back in New Bedford again. So it led me to believe that this is where God had intended me to have stop my journey of recovery was in the city of New Bedford. And um, I came to a holding out here, kicking and screaming, fighting tooth and nail. Uh, I had come from under a bridge in Fall River for about seven years homeless. Um, had a 23 year marriage that I had just like squandered away, treated her like dirt. Two sons didn't talk to me for over seven years. Uh, and I was just alone, lonely, tired. And they talk about like being caught in the grip of addiction. And um, let me tell you, man, that grip is, is a powerful grasp to have. Because when you're sitting there using substances beyond your control, that you, like in the neighborhood to where they live, they would call the police because I had just taken advantage of them and robbed them and utilized their kindness all for self gain and ended up, for lack of a better term, passed out. And uh, I got to this facility and one of the reasons I'd like to thank God for everything is I had been to this one particular detox so many times that at three o'clock in the morning, my face broken wide open, covered in blood. When I knocked on the door at two o'clock in the morning, um, the nurse that opened the door knew me by name and said, Tommy, my God, you look like you're gonna die. And I remember breaking down crying and said, if you don't let me in here tonight, like right now, tonight's the night I'm gonna die. And she let me in and she didn't call an ambulance and she didn't send me to the hospital to be medically cleared because they knew me. And they knew me because I had been there so many times. And I can remember getting upstairs and sitting on my bed and I had no other options. I had no other options. I had been trying to get clean for nine years after my mom passed away. I couldn't. So I sat on the bed and said, listen, man, if there is something out there, if there's something been looking over my shoulder, taking care of me when I was not capable of taking care of myself, and I remembered the night prior and whatever made that gun misfire, whatever allowed me the strength to get up after they beat me up and run away, um, if you're out there still looking down on me, the bottom line is, I know how to get clean. Here I am in detox again for like the 900th time, but for the life of me, I cannot stay clean. I said, please, just help me stay clean. I don't want to live like this no more. And a couple of days went by and the fog lifted a little bit and I went right away back to trying to manipulate my avenue of recovery. I knew some people who owned some recovery houses and tried to manipulate my way into there because it was a block from where I was using. And you know, I really wasn't quite sure that this was gonna take and I didn't wanna to have to travel a long way to get the next one and just crazy thinking. Thinking I was incapable of stopping and didn't know what was gonna to happen to my life after I stopped. I had lived like that for so long. And um, I, through God's grace, I ended up out here in a holding in New Bedford. I tried to manipulate in that holding and um, that stuff didn't work. I knew a gentleman that came all the way out there to do an interview to get me into his halfway house in Fall River. And uh, the day he came, he works for a profit company. I won't say the company. And he came up and said to me, Tommy, I don't know what to tell you. Now this gentleman, God rest his soul, he used to do the interviews, write the list out, pick off the list who filled the bed in the halfway house and move you in. And he came to me that day and he said, the board of directors called and said to keep the four empty beds empty, not to do any more intakes, and not to fill those four beds, so I can't even put you on the list. And I remember going in my room at, at the hole and going, God, why won't you let this go the way I wanted it to go? And then I realized that uh, there was something working for me again in my life that I was, was beyond my control. So I went to the caseworker and I asked the caseworker, like, what, do you think I'm trying to control my destiny here? And her response was, gee, Tommy, do you think? And um, I said, you know something, I give up. Whatever you want me to do, whatever you suggest I should do, you're the professional, guide me, just help me. And I ended up in a halfway house out here to one of the organizations that are part of this collaboration. And um, I did six months in that halfway house and I got caught up here at PACA volunteering because I needed to occupy my time. And I'm that individual that I need chaos in my life. I need it. And if it's not constructive chaos, I will create destructive chaos. So um, I got involved here volunteering and I realized what this organization did. And I've known Carl for years and years. He knew me back when we were kids and um, he offered me an opportunity and I jumped on it. And I said, absolutely. And uh, I've been here for about eight years. 
And I'll tell you, uh, my life is, is better today than, than I could have ever imagined in my entire life. My, my life is beyond my wildest dreams. My two children are back in my life. I have grandchildren that run up to me and hug me and tell me they love me. I'm allowed to take them to the park with no supervision. I have keys to my sister's houses. I do work in their homes. I, uh, nobody clenches their pocketbook when I come into a room anymore. Uh, I was able to be available the last years of my dad's life. I uh, managed to build that relationship the last year and a half of his life. And um, it's funny because my dad knew a lot of the people from my childhood. And when he passed away, I looked around the funeral parlor and I realized that not one of those individuals that I grew up with was there. But when I looked again, a lot of the individuals I've met in recovery and through this organization were there supporting me. And uh, to me, that's what makes my life worth getting up every day and coming back here and doing what I do and try to help the next individual. Because let me tell you, if you don't believe that you can stay clean and change your life, trust me, if I can do it, you can do it. There was nobody out there that was any worse than I was. 33 years, missed my mom's passing, built a relationship with my dad and got my family back in my life. I will say this though, I'm a member of Narcotics Anonymous and uh, that's what worked for me because Carl talked about educating yourself. If I didn't learn who I was and what made me tick, I don't think I'd be clean today. Because it, this disease of addiction goes way beyond the substances that we put in our body. This addiction is about the person you brought in and what made you use the very first time in the first place. And I found out for me, I didn't act the way I act because I use drugs. I use drugs because of the way I used to behave and how it made me feel after the act. So for me, that's what's worked for me for almost nine years. I'll be celebrating nine years, January 7th. And um, I couldn't have done it without these organizations, without the fellowships, the 12-step programs, Narcotics Anonymous, Alcoholics Anonymous. Hey, listen, whatever works for you, just jump into a 12-step program, get to know about yourself, educate yourself about yourself, find out what makes you tick, and then most of all, find happiness. Because recovery isn't all about doing hard work, it's about enjoying the new love you found. Thank you, Tom. And like Tom, many of you are the voices of recovery. Doesn't matter where you are, you are in recovery as long as you're making an effort. So you always should give yourself credit as long as you're utilizing uh, the services available. So before we all run off and get our lunch, because we're all starving, just a couple things. We will continue to have raffles as we go along throughout lunch. And we have the pleasure throughout lunch and most probably a lot of you already know him um, to be playing music in a story um, that will be here. So throughout your lunch, bring your lunch here. We'll do raffles. You'll listen to um, this wonderful, I think it is wonderful, Wayne. I actually didn't know Wayne did this part of uh, musical. I know Wayne uh, for a long time, but now as a musician, so uh, it's such a wonderful thing to have Wayne here and uh, you'll be playing and doing his little piece, Wayne St. Pierre. So before I forget, we want to thank him for being here, taking the time, um, you know, and giving this back to the recovery. So Carl, you have directions for lunch. Oh, and before you speak, I want to thank all the speakers that took the time to be here this morning and support us. Uh, it was wonderful to have Carl, Lee, Marianne, um, you know, Brian here. Thank you so much once again. Everybody being here to support us.